How's it going everyone? Zonobar here coming at you with another video. Today I want to talk about a topic that is kind of long overdue and the topic is Riot Games franchising in LCS. So I wanted to give you my opinion about it and just talked about how important this could be. I want to talk about the good part, I want to talk about the bad part of it and I just want to express my opinion so feel free also to do the same in the comment section down below. So the first thing I want to talk about is a little bit recap of the story. The link of the article I'm reading is down below but I just want to recap if you guys haven't heard of anything. So Riot Games, the company that owns or that created League of Legends, decided to franchise the NALCS. This is very important. So it's only the NLCS, it's not the EU LCS. What franchising means is that teams like TSM, CLG, uh, all that stuff, Clan 9, they will be able to buy a permanent spot within the LCS. Just like you see in NBA, you have the Golden State Warriors, the like the Mavericks, the this, the that. They're always going to be there because they're a franchise of the NBA League. And they have revenue sharing, they have all those benefits from this. And of course, they cannot be relegated, they can't be kicked out, they cannot just lose their team spots. They will always be there. And this is super interesting because it is esports stepping one step forward towards traditional sport medium. And it's such an, it's a very interesting business model to discuss because it's so standardized it's, to, it's like everyone is doing it that it's interesting to talk about it of course this business model this deal cut it whatever you want doesn't always have positive impact but there's definitely good things about it the deal is with Wired games is that your tsm you give me tell me 10 million dollars and i will give you the tsm spot in the lcs for life as long as the lcs exists this is crucial so that Regans can move to the step forward, I think, and that things couldn't last uh, the way they were for a specific reason. TSM or Business X or Team Coca Cola or Team like whatever team is going to be created in the future, the only reason that most big companies don't invest in esports is that you don't know where you're going to be in six months if you're not like the top 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 team and if you want a top team you need the top players the top condition the top gaming house and all that has a cost if you're tsm you've been winning uh nalcs for a while you've been number two or number one pretty much all your career you're good like you're chilling that gives tsm the opportunity to be sponsored by companies like logitech geico and so 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 many of them but if you're team xyz and you created this entrepreneurial journey with your friend and you're like number eight of the split and you're looking for sponsors well sponsor gonna be like yo i can sponsor you but i don't know where you're gonna be in six months are you gonna get relegated i don't want to be like there's so much less exposure in challenger series because obviously like less people watch this than the lcs which makes total sense it's just hard for the growth of esports overall so everything stays stagnant they invest in the top teams the top teams get more money they get more better players and the small teams still here because they don't have any revenue stream. They have some, but it's so much riskier for investors. I thought this is fascinating that Riot Game is like, okay, let's franchise. Let's have TSM, CLG, Climb 9, this, this, and that forever and see how it goes. And I think for that, it's a great decision because people will put more money into esports with less risk. So they will be able to express uh, with like more money the intent to uh, participate in such an amazing industry. And this can only be healthy for the organizations, the managers, the owners, but also for the players that are also people that are fairly young and are still looking into security within the industry. Because whereas Bjergsen, he's like Red Bull sponsored in the best team, he's very popular, he makes a lot of money. The last, the worst player of the Alsace is not all the time like secure about his future about what he's what he's gonna do if he's relegated and stuff Riot is trying to help and Riot does an amazing job at it as I've heard but it's still so hard to just predict and take the risk so Riot game is trying to grow to a bigger scale to bigger things while limiting the risk which is gonna encourage investors to buy in on that note Riot game is also gonna create what is called the NALCS Players Association 
and the articles and its quoting, it will be giving pros a seat at the table and link decisions. It's super important that League of Legends players are also part of the deal and they're allowed to have a voice and League of Legends literally want to found an association where players would have a seat at the table and have their words. So like when there's problems with esports stuff and when there's like when there's like stuff going on, players didn't have a voice, now they have one and I think this is huge. But of course, of course, that comes with franchising, the revenue sharing, and just people are literally like... So what's happening is that literally teams are becoming investors of League of Legends. That's literally what it is. It's like, give us $10 million, and it's like almost like a series of... It's like a round A or round B investment where, okay, like TSM, Cloud number blah, you're all investors. You want this to grow. Give us money. We'll share revenue. And will grow together even bigger, which is which makes sense to be honest. Now I want to talk about the negative part of franchising. So the only reason I don't like franchising is the marketing aspect of it, where it's very good to have investors coming in and putting a lot of money with less risk. It's also very risky that all the traditional media people are just gonna, they're literally gonna destroy esports by advertising 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 right now as you're watching this video as i'm recording it there's probably like big teams that are like okay we're gonna buy a franchise what's up coca-cola what's up razor what's up this what's up what's up we need some money we need some money we'll market the shit out of you we'll get people to do videos for you we'll get people to tweet for you we'll get people to sign shit for you and <clears throat> sorry and this is super important because advertising is good it's healthy for an industry, but it always has a boundary to not cross. I'm not saying that franchising will cross this boundary, but if you look at TV, if you look at sports on TV, and you look the number of logos that you see within like 10 minutes, it's absolutely insane. Like NBA, when it's like interview of a player, it's not the interview of a player. It's the Chicken McNuggets from Carl's Jr. interview of a player. Like, all that shit comes from franchising and the fact that all those companies spend a lot of money to invest in this industry. So yeah, it gets a lot of money and NBA players generate a lot of money because people come to see them. NBA players make a lot of money, so it's good for them because like they make a lot of money from, from what they generate, which is obviously logic. But for the viewer experience, it is so toxic. You see a logo here, you see a logo there. Oh, five minute break. A five minute break is now called the five minute Magnum break. Like you see all that stuff. If you watch carefully NBA or any other sports, you'll see the number of ads you consume. And if you figure it out, you're going to absolutely shit your pants. And this is very, very dangerous because gamers and esports fans are from a generation that hates, hates ads. When I used to work at a studio, we had like, I think a huge rate of like 85% of ad blockers. And people don't like ads in this industry. Like, I've repeated so much time. People do not like ads. I'm super scared of having, like, LCS, uh, like, Toyota Prius replay or some shit. Like, stuff like that. That will make money for the industry. That will grow the industry. That will do well for the industry. But that will just bring toxicity bite by bite. And I think that could be the thing that actually kills it at the end of the day. That being said... I think that now that it's franchising, you, if you have like esports dreams, if you want to be the next TSM Reginald, if you and your group of friends wants to create an esports organization and you want to invest in League of Legends, it might be too late. Like you might be forced to go into a system where TSM is here, CIG is here, but if you want to, if you want to found your team, even if you have the investors, if you're not, once the franchising is done, it is done. So... League of Legends is closing doors to new entrepreneurial teams, which is which can be good and bad. And of course, League of Legends is not the only esports out there. And there's still the EOSCS, and there's still all those leagues out there. But still, it's something to think about as now you guys are going to get used to seeing TSM, Climb 9, all those big ones. I don't know who's going to buy those franchises. I don't even know if TSM is going to still be called TSM in two years. Uh, it might be like TSM Coca-Cola or something like this. We don't know. So that's it, guys. I just wanted to give you my opinion about this franchising. I think it has amazing positive parts, but also negative parts to consider. But it's how business works, right? Not everyone can be happy. But just be careful, guys, because as viewers, as fans of esports, 
we need to protect what we love and we not we need to make sure that we're not being abused. Honestly guys, I haven't watched TV in like a few years, but since I've been in San Francisco, I've started to watch NBA and I'm seeing what sponsors, what ads, what like all those like advertisement commercial stuff are doing to media and it's actually like destroying it more than like doing it good watch NBA guys watch some sports on TV and you will see what esports is gonna come and it doesn't look good man and as much as players will make more money and that the industry will do better too much ad is a thing and today in America they don't have a sense of what advertisement is like it is every everywhere and it's absolutely insane and I think it's very important to talk about it now so that maybe Riot thinks about it maybe we can have an impact maybe we can have a change but I seriously seriously think that ads could destroy what esport is about the whole sense of the community the whole sense of the the group of gamers that we are thank you so much for watching guys I wish you an amazing day thank you so much for listening to me and taking the time if you guys want to react to this video, it will be also present on the Facebook group uh, Gamers and Esports Enthusiast. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I wish you an amazing day. Peace.